Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the MSU Science Festival. My name is Chelsea Budu, and I'll be your moderator today. Today, we have Kelsey Merrick Wagner. Kelsey is a printmaker, painter, textile artist, and an environmental activist, but she's also a second year PhD anthropology student with certifications and specializations in gender justice, environmental change, and human animal studies, but also community engagement. Kelsey has her bachelor's in studio arts from Western Michigan University, and she also has a master's from Appalachian Studies. Sustainability, and she also focuses on sustainability. Her research focuses on human elephant conflict and elephant ecoturnism in Southeast Asia and incorporates community-based art to raise awareness, spark discussion, and build capacity. But she also reimagines a more socially and environmentally just future for all species on the planet. I welcome Kelsey to tell you so much more about re recycle and the community and environment. Thank you so much for joining us, Kelsey. Hi, Chelsea. Thanks so much. And thanks everyone for being here. I'm going to share my screen to get started. So, hi, welcome to the Michigan State University Science Festival. This is my presentation, Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, Creative Responses to Plastic Pollution. My name is Kelsey Merrick Wagner. First and foremost, I am an artist and an environmental activist. I'm so excited to share my work with you and inspire you to reduce, reuse, and recycle by making art. I'm also a PhD student in the anthropology department at Michigan State University, where my research focuses on human environment relationships and the role of art in science communication about conservation. Healthy ecosystems full of biodiversity are so important and keeping them that way requires humans to practice sustainability and act as stewards of the earth. I was lucky to come from a family that loved and respected the environment and some of my earliest environmental activism memories are of helping my mom collect trash off the shores of Lake Michigan. I might have found this a little embarrassing as a kid, but nearly 30 years later, I'm still collecting trash everywhere I go, which you will see has seeped into my art making. When I began my graduate research, I wanted to use my career to advocate for the ecosystems and the animals I love especially elephants. While I had long assumed that the field of wildlife conservation was only for biologists and ecologists, a trip to Elephant Nature Park in Chiang Mai, Thailand changed my perspective. Conservation is a community effort and the people are just as important as the animals and the environment. This experience helped me realize the great need for cultural anthropologists, scientists, artists, and science communicators and educators in conservation. Since beginning my research, I've been able to live and work in Cambodia and Thailand, where I got to see elephants every day. I have also used my background in printmaking, painting, and textiles to create collaborative community art projects abroad, as well as solo exhibits in America, each focusing on environmental issues. These are some great examples of some of the radical and creative forms of science communication out there. I would like to share a few of these projects with you. The first is an exhibit titled From Bangkok to Boone, which features life-size elephants made from recycled paper. This project was directly inspired by my first trip to Thailand, where I learned of some of the amazing projects that rescue captive elephants and protect wild elephants. I created these elephants by screen printing giant papers, which I cut and sewed together. I used recycled papers, even old homework and class readings to stuff the elephants. They were then hung from the ceiling of the gallery against a mountain and sky background, which featured facts about elephants and encouraged people to get engaged in advocacy. Another project I'm excited to share is the Southern River Terrapin Plastic Project that I organized in Siem Reap, Cambodia. 
Working with local Cambodian and American high school and college students, we completed trash cleanups around the city, collecting thousands of bottles. We painted the bottles and arranged them in the field as an art installation in the shape of a river caravan. We filmed this video with the drone. I'm just gonna play a short segment of it. Sometimes the sound gets messed up, but it's just sort of background music. So don't worry that you're missing anything. So this video was filmed with the drone and the students that were involved in the project got to help edit the video and learned editing and uh, video editing skills and then were able to share it on YouTube. It was really amazing to see the project unfold, especially because of the involvement of today's youth who are tomorrow's conservation leaders. So, <coughs> excuse me. Lastly, another plastic project. Are you seeing a theme here? This is a series I call Loom and Doom. During the pandemic, I've been collecting plastic bags from family members and friends to use as art supplies for projects. I have hundreds of grocery, produce, trash, and shopping bags in all colors, which I cut into strips and weave together on the loom. Many of these weavings are currently on display in juried shows and galleries, and I always include an artist statement about reducing plastic consumption and caring for the environment. All right, are you ready to learn about plastic problems and how to use art to solve them? Let's go. So our first question, <clears throat> what's so bad about plastic? For starters, what is plastic? Plastic is a synthetic material that was created in 1907. It's durable, flexible, and inexpensive, so everybody loves to use it. However, it's derived from fossil fuel-based petrochemicals like natural gas or petroleum, which means that the process of creating it contributes to more greenhouse gases and worsens climate change. Another problem is that plastic takes between 500 to 1,000 years to degrade. So every plastic bottle we get when we're on our way to work and want water, that's now in the environment for at least 500 years. There are a lot of different kinds of plastics. People are very confused, myself included, about what they mean, or what they can be used for. Not all of them are actually recyclable. So numbers one through five, only a small percentage of them gets recycled. Whereas the last one after PS, and I'm sorry, I'm sure you can hear my dog in the background. Um, but yes, yeah, so the last one, seven, it's just sort of a catch-all for all kinds of plastics. And so even if it's not recyclable, that goes on there and it's sort of a greenwashing where it makes it look like, oh, well, I buy this product, at least I can give it another life or hope that someone else turns it into, and that is not the case. How much plastic do we use? 
Over the past 10 years, we have produced more plastic than during the whole of the last century. There are 300 million tons of plastic that are created every single year, and this is constantly going up. The average American goes through about 185 pounds of plastic a year, which is terrifying. I'm always trying to cut down by bringing bag, reusable bags to the store or using uh, different shampoos that don't come in bottles. But it seems no matter what, you get a package from Amazon and it's wrapped in 40 layers of plastic and there's nothing you can do. One of the issues is that only about 5% is recycled. Places like Coca-Cola try to use terms like virgin plastic to say that they're only gonna be recycling um, a certain amount but that amount is always way smaller than um, sort of where we need to be with having good regulations and policy about what's recycled and what we do with that. And lastly, about 8 million tons of plastic end up in our oceans every single year, which is a major environmental problem and also causes health issues for humans as well. So who does plastic harm? Sea turtles. This is the hawksbill sea turtle. The population is unknown. They are critically endangered, but there's thought to be around 8,000 adult females. And they hang out in the tropical reefs of the Indian, Pacific, and Atlantic Oceans. Some of their threats are overfishing, loss of nesting habitat, water pollution, and plastic ingestion. You can see that this plastic bag right here looks very similar to a jellyfish, to a hungry turtle. How can we help? Oh, one second, I see a chat. Okay. Yeah, Kelsey, so there was a question in the chat that says, this is a great way to make art using plastic, but what do you do with the bottles after you're done with the art? Great, yeah, we'll get to that at the, the end of the presentation. I can answer that question. Is my dog too loud in the background? Okay. No, it's loud. You can hear me. So how can you help? Everyone knows that straws are bad for turtles. You can stop using plastic ones entirely, or if you really need one, you can get a reusable straw to bring with you wherever you go. You should always find a way to participate in beach cleanups. There's lots of public group events that are posted online. You could also get a group of friends together and go out and pick up trash and enjoy a nice day outside. <coughs> Another uh, little fact that um, I did not know is that sea turtles when nesting have issues navigating the landscape when there are new obstacles in it. So after you've had a fun day at the beach, digging holes and building sand castles, you should actually knock them down and level it so that any hatching turtles are able to quickly get back to the water and start their lives. And another one, this is sort of like kites. We've heard these things before. Don't release, release balloons into the sky. This is the Hawaiian monk seal who is so adorable. They're from Hawaii. They have a population of about 1400 and they're endangered. One of the major issues for them, as you'll see in this picture, is they get entangled in fishing nets. Many fishing companies will just release their nets once they are too damaged to use again, and they stay uh, obviously in the ocean and critters get caught in them and die. These seals also suffer from commercial hunting, which there's starting to be more policies to outlaw that. Um, and then water pollution, they can ingest plastic. And it's of course also poor water quality to have so much plastic floating around where you breathe. And how can we help? If you ever see nets in the water, whether you're in lakes or oceans, wherever, pick up the nets and throw them away. That's one of the worst kinds of trash that's out there. Another one, this one's pretty obvious. Don't buy any animal skins. If you do see some, um, for sale somewhere, you can take the extra mile and report them. There's lots of different websites and happy to provide resources so we can cut down on illegal wildlife trade as well. And lastly, if you see them, give them space. They're super cute, but they just want to be left alone in peace so that they can live happy, healthy lives. And our last one, this is uh, a seabird we are probably all familiar with trying to steal our picnics at the beach. They have a pretty large population. There's lots of variations of these species as well. 
But this one has about 20,000 individuals. They live near the North Pacific Ocean and they are near threatened. Some of the threats, entanglement in plastic, just like the seals, ingestion in plastic is a huge one, especially microplastics, which are the little tiny bits of plastic that keep breaking down smaller and smaller, but never degrade. The fish eat them, the birds eat the fish. So all of this plastic goes into their bodies and eventually these microplastics end up in our bodies as well. So how can you help? Avoid any products with microbeads. Uh, there used to be a lot of face washes that had microbeads in them. Those are now outlawed um, in most places because we realized how bad it was in terms of what's going into our water streams. Pick up trash, no matter how small. I know it always feels good to, to bring home a big haul, but sometimes those tiny pieces of plastic are just as important to make sure they never get in the water stream. And lastly, reduce your own plastic consumption. Um, there's all kinds of tips and tricks for things you can cut out. So now that we've talked a little bit about plastic, who it affects in the environment, I'm going to link back to um, some ideas from my art projects and show you two activities um, that are kid friendly or you can do them on your own. They're kind of nice pandemic activities and the resources are included on my website. So the first one is the Shrinky Dink craft. If you are 80s or 90s kids, you probably remember having a Shrinky Dink oven to make all kinds of cool plastic toys. The new DIY sustainability version is to find number six plastic. That was um, one of those plastics on the list. It'll have the recycling sign with a six. And that means you can use this, that plastic for this craft. So you'll need scissors, a hole punch, permanent markers, parchment paper, baking sheet, an oven, and string. I created a short time-lapse video of my process so you can see it. That will also be on the website. And you can see I'm wearing them right now. I've got a turtle friendly, and I've got my green hawksbill sea turtle, which are my favorite pals. So then you just put them in your oven on a piece of parchment paper. It happens super quick. I would not walk away from your oven or your art will be ruined. It's just about two minutes. And then let them dry and you can thread them to make necklaces. I've also heard of people making their own like Monopoly board pieces. Um, you can do all kinds of really fun stuff with this. And so the next one is a loom and weaving craft. Um, I wanted to do sort of a more accessible version of the plastic weaving I do on the loom. So I came up with this idea, which is pretty fun. I just used an old picture frame, put nails in the back and used it to weave and it lets the light come through. It's a nice little gift or it's just something cool to have around your house as a conversation starter. So for that, you need scissors, plastic bottles, paint, paint brushes, hammer, nails, yarn, a wooden photo frame, a marker, and a tape measure. Those are all my projects. Thanks for watching. I hope you're inspired to reduce, reuse, and recycle through art. My email, Instagram, and website are right here. I'd like to give a big thank you to my friends and loved ones uh, for supporting and inspiring me, to the MSU Science Festival for this fellowship and excellent training in science communication, 
and to my home department at Michigan State University, the Department of Anthropology. If you have any questions, I will stop sharing my screen and I'm happy to answer them. Great job, Kelsey. I learned a lot about recycling plastics. We did have one, we had one question of, you've created the art projects like the turtle um, with plastic bottles. What happens once the art is done? Where does the plastic go? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. So in Cambodia, they don't have a centralized waste management system. So lower socioeconomic class individuals are actually the ones that take care of all of the trash management. They um, pick it up, they, they basically have horns and parts and they travel around the neighborhood announcing themselves and people will donate their recycling to them. And then they have to carry all of that recycling to a recycling center where they're paid a couple of dollars per load essentially. Um, so after we got all of those bottles that we had collected, we ended up donating them to one of the local trash collectors so that they could get some income off of that and bring it back into the system. Um, it was funny though, they were a little concerned about the paint being on the bottles um, <laughs> and if they would still be recyclable. Um, but as far as I know, they were. So it's nice that they became something else. One of the things I'm really interested in is a uh, organization that does eco bricks where they take plastic bottles and turn them into bricks for building supplies. So maybe all my weavings will end up on the side of someone's house rather than on the side of someone's wall. <laughs> well, that's an awesome idea. I didn't know that things were recycled into bricks for home building. That's very cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, Kelsey, I was wondering for the weaving, do you need to use yarn? Because I personally have never weaved. Is it possible to use uh, like plastic instead of yarn? No, I've thought of that. I've really tried to troubleshoot that and I can't. Um, I'm in my studio right now, so I have all my stuff around me. But like, so this would be a strip that I would weave with. It's too weak to use as the weft because of the just sort of the process of going back and forth on your loom requires that really, uh, a, what's it called? Just an intense enough fabric that can hang on to that weight in constant motion. But no, I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking like, what if I found some fishing nets and deconstructed them into strings and used that as a warp? But yeah, other than just going out and buying fishing line, I've not found a way to go full plastic. That was going to be my question to a child here. I was thinking, hmm, can we make it all plastic? I know <laughs> I've also, I'm a knitter, so I've seen um, where they've made this plastic string and they have knitted it into grocery bags to use to take. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I think we have some knitters in the audience. My aunt is here, so we'll, have to, awesome. we'll yeah. have to look I, that up. I haven't tried it myself yet, but. Maybe when the science festival calms down, I'll have time for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think we're out of time. It was very interesting. I loved your photos and your artwork with the elephants in the first few frames. Was I really enjoyed that too? So thank you for sharing recycling with plastics. Of course. Thank you so much, and thank you to you and Chelsea for and Catherine for all of your hard work and technical assistance and all the excitement and so many people getting involved in science communication. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you to everyone from far and wide that came to see me. It means a lot to have your support. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.